Athletic Center. I'm Jack Gantra alongside my partner and president of Max Live, Simi Warso. We just had the privilege of speaking with President Berman. Now we're getting into a little bit of the basketball. You know, the reason why most people are here probably. We have the number one seed, Chalhevet Firehawks, against the number two seed, Battery Toro Wolfpack. Simi, we'll start for some of the viewers that are just tuning in for the first time. They haven't watched. These teams have both won two games. Give us a little bit of the styles of both teams. Well, Chalhevet, they come out with a very smart game. They're very well coached. They play smart defense. They don't rush. They take their time. They slow the ball down in the half court. And they try to make the other team make the mistakes. Valley Tour, on the other hand, they're trying to come up with their star power. They got their main guy. We've been talking about him all tournament, Ryan Terrell. He averaged 33 points during the regular season. He's been slowed down during this tournament. He's only averaging 20 a game. So we'll see which one wins. Star power, or is it going to be a coach, well-coached team? A month and a half ago, these two teams played across the country in California, and Chalhevet won the game. That's probably why they're the one seed, if you ask me. But I spoke to both players and coaches from both teams, and it was really Valley Tour who controlled most of the game. They had a 16-point lead, and they let it slip away. I talked to Coach Coleman, who is the Chalhevet coach, and he told me what the problem was really, was they, their scouting department is not as good as Valley Tora, and he said that they let the Altites, both Mimi and Nadav, who will get into the broad broadcast goes on. They let them shoot a little bit too much and they're very good standstill shooters. What he told me today is going to be they're going to be a little less help and love for the Altit brothers and it's going to be a little more balanced. They play a man defense. We'll see that throughout the game. They never play a zone shall have it. And for Valley Tora, I've watched them play both games as my third straight game announcing. And if you count last year's sixth straight game announcing them. So I think I know them pretty well. They don't play a lot of guys. So it's going to be the stars for Valley Tora against the team man defense of shall have it. Coming up next, we will bring you the pregame introductions and then the Tier 1 Championship, Valley Tora and Chalhevet, coming up next. In Yeshiva University, I've been lucky to be on both the volleyball and the basketball teams. Being on the team has a huge effect on my academic life. The same way that I know I can push myself in athletics, I know I can push myself in academics. Going to Shiram at night instead of during the day or going to them at, during the day when I've practiced at night. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin, Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin the Tier 1 Championship game, we ask for your attention. It is my pleasure and honor to ask the President of Yeshiva University, Rabbi Ari Berman, to please say a few words. Okay. Thank you so much. How many, uh, how many people are here from Los Angeles? How many people from Los Angeles? <laughs> we are thrilled to welcome this West Coast only finals. The West Coast only finals at Yeshiva University. Here at Yeshiva University, we take, we take athletics very, very seriously. All of our teams excel in their areas. Let me just tell you one quick thing before we begin this incredible tournament. On our latest max run, when the Yeshiva University Maccabees 
won the playoffs and won the championship in Skyline and for the first ever NCAA Division III tournament. We received messages of support and congratulations from around the world, around the world. And every one of the Macs understood that when you play for Yeshiva University, you play for the Jewish people. When we play basketball, we do so with grit and determination and sportsmanship, midot tovot. We do so with our values. And that's what makes this so special. That's what makes this tournament so special. And we congratulate the teams for reaching this, not just reaching this peak of excellence in their basketball, but in the way that they play basketball. Congratulations to you both. May the best team win. Congratulations. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and turn your attention to the flag as Ari Mandelbaum from the Y Studs a cappella group will perform the national anthem of the United States of America and the State of Israel. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the Nefesh Yehudi Omiya Ulfateh Mizrach Kadima Ayn Litzion Sophia Olalo Avda Tikvatenu Hatikma bachno talapayim liotam khovshi me arzeinu eretz tzion yerushalayim liotam khovshi me arzeinu Eretz Tzion Yerushalayim And now ladies and gentlemen the starting lineups First for the visiting wolf pack of Valley Torah A senior at six foot seven at the guard position. Number ten, Nadav Altit. Also a senior at six foot seven, also at the guard position. Number twelve, Nimrod Altit. 
another senior at six foot three at the forward spot, number 15, Ben Hammer. Our fourth senior at five foot eight at guard, number two, Liel Saida. And a senior at six foot six at guard, number 11, Ryan Terrell. The Wolfpack are coached by Lior Schwartzberg and Alex Liu. And now the starting lineups for the Firehawks of Shalhevet. A junior standing six foot one at the forward position, number 33, Asher Daur. A six foot two senior at center, number five, Ben Mashiach. A junior standing five foot nine at the guard spot, number one, Zach Muller. A freshman at five foot eleven at the point guard position, number two, Zev Reimer. And a senior standing five foot eleven at the guard position, number twenty three, Benny Zaghi. The Firehawks are coached by Ryan Coleman, Andrew Schultz, and Matty Horowitz. And we're back here in the Maxon Athletic Center, Tier 1 Championship, Valley Torah Wolfpack, and the number one seed, Shalhevet Firehawks. We have one versus two, Simi. This is Shalhevet's third attempt in a row, three years in a row, trying to capture that Tier 1 crown. Well, Jack, I just remember last time we were in the booth, we were calling Yeshiva University's champi Skyline Championship game where they won, and that was a very memorable moment, and I look forward to this game. This should be just as memorable, Shalhevet. They definitely have what to prove. They have been to the championship two, games in, two years in a row, as you have mentioned. Valley Torah has actually never won a Tier 1 championship in Sarachek. So they're looking to get their first crown. Both teams have a lot to prove. Both teams really want this. They really have been coming back year after year, trying to win this championship. And we look forward to a very good matchup this afternoon, 2.50 Eastern time here in New York. Valley Torah wearing red. First time this tournament, as they are the two seed. And the tip goes to Shalhevet in their Washington Wizard style, the white ju jerseys. A little bit hard to see the numbers. The starting lineups were announced in the pregame, if you could not hear. This is Asher Dower in your programs. He's number 33. I spoke to him. He lost his jersey. That's why he's wearing number 20, a junior. Shalhevet's offense has struggled throughout the tournament, and Valley Torres' defense has been very hard to solve with all the length. Dower throws it up, not a good look, out of bounds, and it'll go to Valley Tora, a defensive possession that looked very good. One thing, Jack, I always harp on is how our team's gonna crash the boards as a big man myself. Always something that I think about right away. You see Shalhevet had two guys crashing the boards. They unfortunately couldn't get the board, but you know, that could be, it's gonna be something to look forward to during this game, see what's going on, see who's gonna win the battle of the boards. And Valley Tora has the height advantage, but we'll see if they have the heart. A strong man-to-man -man defense from Shalhevet. As I mentioned in the opening, it's gonna be Benny Zaghi will take Ryan Terrell. That, the whole entire game, he always takes the best player. The senior and the captain. Coach Coleman told me earlier today that he's done a great job this tournament, but all season long, he did a good job on Jude Oppenheimer in yesterday's semifinal win. And you notice Valley Torres has the height, but both of their 6'7 brothers are standing outside the three-point line, so it'll be interesting to watch, see how that facilitates the offense. That one's a two-pointer by Leo Sada, the heart of this team. And Coach Coleman told me they're gonna need number two and number three to beat them. But there, a steal by Hammer. Lays it up and in, and it's four-nothing. Sloppy play there by Shalhevet. And the lead is up to four. And we talked pregame, we said Shalhevet usually is a team that's under control. They're very well coached. They're looking a little sloppy, as you mentioned, early on, and you know, Coach Coleman trying to slow him down, trying to set up their half-court offense. This is what they're looking to get into. Zach Muller, the point guard, he struggled from the field throughout this tournament. Last year as an underclassman was a, one of the stars of the tournament. We'll see if he can get some points here today as it's been a struggle. 
Shot clock winding down here. The length looks to be a, a factor. Dower drives in and gets fouled, and it'll be out of bounds. On the ground, the foul. A push called. Foul coming, coming up on a Dow Valtite. You know, Valitora, you know, they've had strong defense this tournament, but reaching in on these, you know, when you're playing a number one seed, you've got to be really careful. You know they're going to be disciplined. You've got to be disciplined as well, especially on the defensive end. You can't reach on those. You don't need to, sh you know, you can show help, but you don't want to reach in. They're going to call that foul every time. I think that was a foul on Sada, according to the scoreboard. I'm not sure. Here shall have it. It's going to be a struggle offensively. It has been all weekend. And if they're going to up easy layups, it's not going to help their cause on defense. Here's Mashiach. Driving in, drawing a lot of defenders. Tries to kick it out to Dower. And they'll reset. The shot clock winding down once again. The motto for the Shalhevet team is first to 40 wins. I think a travel will be called, and it is. A travel there on Reamer, the freshman. And it'll be going the other way. And it's definitely important to realize Shalhevet has won both of their games in this tournament by double digits. And Valley Tora has won both of their games by 10 points. So. Valley Torres has been playing, playing down to the competition. Shalhevet has really not. And a beautiful feed inside once again. Sada with the two. We talked about the Altit brothers and Terrell, but right now it's the role players who are stepping up. 6-0 Wolfpack. A double team there at the top. But a good pass to Zagi who finds Reamer. Reamer only a freshman. The three there by Zagi off the mark. Terrell and Altit both fighting for the rebound on the same team, but Terrell gets it up to the all team. That was like a double dribble. A little bit of a late call, but they get the call there. And it'll be a turnover. That's Nimrod, but I spoke to him, and he goes by Nimi. So Nimrod on the program, that's his official name, but the nickname is Nimi, and he said he'd rather be referred to as Nimi. And so. Valtor coming out in a 1-3-1 one, one trap right now. Once they, once they cross half court, it's going to be a hard trap and they're rotating possessions on when they're going with this trap. Here they have it right here. And the three in the middle, both all three standing over 6-6. Six, six. That is one trap that is hard to beat. Dower feeling the pressure by Hammer, who's at the top and doing a good job at it. Here's Dower slowly moving to Muller, getting it inside. A nice pass to Mashiach, who lays it up in. A methodical play there by the Firehawks. One tic-tac-toe to get to a layup for Ben Mashiach. And that's great patience on the offensive end of Shalhevet. When you're in a press, you sometimes feel the pressure. You want to get the boot of the ball quickly. You got to take your time. You got to find the open man and you right there. Here's Terrell, high release, and that's going to be a foul. Hammer was grabbing Dower, and they call it. Ryan Terrell, it's tough to stop him once he gets any room as his release is so high with that 6-7 frame. And you notice Shalhevet on the defensive end, they've been giving up some easy layups on back-to-back -back plays. It's very tough when you have a player like Terrell that you have to worry about to focus on some of the you know, other guys, some of the role players, because those guys, you don't, you're not so worried about them. You're not thinking about them. And you notice right here, Ryan Terrell now at the top of the 1-3-1. One -one, they're switching up the positions on the defensive side. Well, because they made a substitution there, a turnover. Komornik in, hammer out for the Wolfpack. The defense pretty strong there, and Terrell in and out. He's struggled throughout the tournament, but the team's in the championship, so he's sure he'll take that. Dower driving in, good pass. Michelle once again, that looked like another travel. A lot of travels here early. Sloppy play by both teams. And that was a good pass inside to get to Mashiach exactly where he wants. Very close to the hoop, but he got a little too excited about the reverse layup. Here's Sada, leading scorer in the game here with four early ones. We're a little over halfway through the first quarter. Low scoring game as we anticipated. And so the game really shall have it wants to play. Sada getting inside, lays it up. No good, looked good off the back rim, but did not fall. And shall have it. We'll take possession here. Looking for points, as that is the goal of this game. Here's Dower, wearing number 20. As I mentioned, the junior Mashiach from mid range. Off the back rim, no. And Terrell rebounds and pushes every time. To Altit Nadav, a, I was about to say a good spot up shooter, and a foul there on Komornik. Looked very good on Sunday was Nadav Altit. That shot did not look good. I don't think he'll be scared to shoot it again though. So I'll have it in the first, in the first quarters, has only allowed a total of nine points throughout the first two games. 
and they've already allowed six here, still 247 left in the first, and they've been had tight defense uh, most first quarters coming out of the break, but they've had a little trouble slowing down this Valley Tower Wolfpack team. Here's Mashiach. And Zagi fumbles and stumbles, and Alti picks it up, and it's going the other way. Another empty possession for the Firehawks. Here's Sada calling out the play Texas. Yesterday they had bigger signs that said Texas. Today it's on the uh, standard paper. But I'm sure the vision on these point guards for, shot for Valley Tour can see that anyway. Here's Terrell. They like the swing pass. Mashiach, excuse me, that's Muller who tips it out of bounds. Well, Stay shall have it ball. Substitutions coming in. It's Betone and Hammer for Sada and Komornik. They only play seven guys, Valley Tour. Maybe they'll throw me off, but yesterday they played seven, Friday they played seven, and they've already went to seven guys here early in this one. Here's Terrell. A pick coming by Hammer, trying to get Zagi off him. A good pass. Hammer, Mashiach on him. Good D. Shot is no good. Rebound, shall have it, and they push. Here's Muller. Muller with Terrell on him. Spin move. Gets the foul called, and he will go to the line, and they will for sure take that one. He will go to the line for two. And we see shall have it being patient on the half court offense, but when they get the push, they take it up strong to the rim. And that's what a smart team does. They don't force the issue. Yes, you're getting trapped, but you make smart passes. You slow the ball down in the half court, but then when you got the fast break, you push it, you take it to the hoop, and you draw contact. Four fouls early on for Valley Torres, zero for shall have it. So the Wolfpack have to keep it that in mind. And yeah, not get into foul trouble early on, especially when you don't go when you only go seven deep. You got to make sure you're not fouling too often. Muller hit the first and hit the second, six four, and this is the game Chalva wants to play. I said it a few minutes ago, but it's true. Their defense is going to be the key for them. Scoring is going to be tough, but if they hold Valley Torah at bay throughout this game, keep it close. Even though they are the one seed. They're not worried about that. They just want to, you know, play their style, and it's the strong man defense. And they're going to let Beton beat them. You can already see here a double team coming. Swing pass, Muller right there for the steal. Great D by Shall have it. You know, they're playing off the guys that they want to let them shoot. And right now, that's Beton and Hammer. It's always going to be two guys. Great pass there inside. Mashiach tipped by Terrell, but it wasn't enough. And Ben Mashiach, the senior leader, hits that one. Even though it says he's a junior in the media guide, he's really a senior. Here's Altit. And Altit's, you know, this is their first year playing high school basketball. We'll see if the tough, if it, when the tough gets going. If it, the going gets tough, the tough gets going. Excuse me. That one, the layup there. And you see Coach Andy Schultz on the, on the sideline telling his team, last possession to have it to push the ball, not let Valley Torres set up in their trap. You know, throwing, trying to throw him off last possession and they did a good job and got an easy look next to the basket. Dower for three, no good. Muller almost picks up the rebound. He doesn't hammer and he calls a timeout there. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. Ben Hammer with a heads up play as he was on the ground called the timeout and Valley Tora will retain possession. And at this point we'd like to thank all of our fans out there watching from across the country for sure out in LA. In Florida I know quick shout out to my high school, Fast Money Shiva High School. I know the Ramzag watching and we'd like to let you know if you'd like to get in touch with us you could send us a message at the clip, clip keep us inbox feedback at maxlive.com we'll listen to any of your comments questions concerns suggestions as this game goes on we've got a packed gym and we expect it to get only more packed as 35 seconds left in the first quarter 8-6 the score Valley Tora with the lead keep tuned for the halftime show. We're going to have a quick presentation from Step It Up and then we'll be speaking with the coach of Yeshiva University men's basketball Skyline champions. Coach Elliot Steinmetz will be in the booth for a quick talk. Back to the action here with the music still playing. It's still playing. And they will re-inbound it. I'm not sure why. It's an interesting place to inbound here, right near us in the booth. Nadav to Terrell. Benny Zaghi taking 
Ryan Terrell. We'll see that throughout this game. He's always done it. And he's doing it right now, and he's done it pretty well as Terrell has zero points throughout this first quarter. Game clock and shot clock differentiating by a few milliseconds. And Valley Toro looks to be holding for one. A good pass inside. Hammer with the lay-in. Not good defense there, and the clock will run out of the first. Good if it goes. Close off the backboard. But we will send it to a commercial break at the end of one in this Tier 1 championship. Valley Torah 10 shall have it 6. Good. Welcome back to Championship Monday, Simi Warso, alongside the esteemed Vice President Jack Antro. Here we have a 10-6 score after one. Valley Torah with the lead. It's been a tight game on both sides. Valley Torah's star, Ryan Terrell, still zero points, but he's had three key assists as they've been they've been getting some easy buckets under with the defense focusing on him. And we've, here comes Valley Torah up the court. Terrell held scoreless and just as coach Coleman said it was just Hammer and Sato beat them and there the lab a new face Yona Hammy coming in first for Valley Torah both teams located in the state of California not both in LA for some of the uneducated fans that live near here one is in the valley one is in LA and we received news from our sideline reporter Sammy Katz on the sideline of shall have it told us that the shall have a coach told him stop being hesitant he wants him to crash the offensive glass not worry about the height just crash the boards and a charge there it didn't look like anyone was scared specifically reamer the freshman of the all brothers as he drew the charge and it's going the other way i spoke when i spoke to coach coleman they said the key was the offensive glass they're going to miss shots but if they can get he said the magic number 15 offensive rebounds 15 second opportunities. That's going to be the key for them. An open three by Zagi is no good. The shooting has been bad for both teams. And a foul there on Mashiach. Only the second team foul. So nothing to worry about in terms of free throw shooting. So 10 points for Valley Torah. Numbers 10, 11, and 12 in red have zero of them which is as surprising as you can imagine. Here's Terrell with the ball at the top of the key being held scoreless by Zagi. A moving screen that was not very well set by Hammy and is an offensive foul. Maybe he's the one that's scared of Benny Zagi as he looked moving around, didn't really want to set that screen. And at this quick break in action, we'd like to thank one of our sponsors, Play Hard, Pray Hard. Elevate your game, play our prayer. It's at the intersection between connecting with God and athletic performance. Check out playourprayer.com to join the community of connected ballers. You said that a little faster. You're telling me we are really professional. Dower to Zagi. To the corner. It's Muller off the mark. Mashiach, and that's exactly what we're talking about. The offensive rebound leads to the three by Dower. No good. And the coaching staff for Shalav, you know, all they can do is draw up plays to get open looks. If they're not going to be able to hit any shots, it's going to be a struggle. Obviously, but that was a great chance there. Two shots, they didn't fall. And we've seen rebounding is not about height. Rebounding is more about boxing out, getting position. We saw with Yeshiva's team during their championship run in the Skyline Conference, they didn't always have the size advantage, but they sure had the heart. They sure were boxing out well, and they were able to secure some very important rebounds in the clutch situations. And... That's seven fouls, so refs are going to discuss who's going to be shooting at the line right now. 
according to our... Let's see what the confusion is. We want to keep the fans informed. I'm not sure why a teed him up chant is started. But it'll be Ben Mashiach shooting free throws, a one and one. Yesterday, Mag and David struggled from the line against Valley Tour. I don't think that was the fans that had anything to do with it. And there Mashiach misses. So the benefit of missed free throws and six points here with a little over six and a half left in the first half. Not a lot of points. Here's Terrell, gets by Zagi. The defense is good enough as he misses that one, but the ball goes right back to Terrell, who finds Nadav Altit, knocks it down. Nadav Altit, the first shot from outside of the paint for either team, if I'm not mistaken, goes in. And it's 13-6 Valley Torah. Here's Muller. Draws a double team there, hard double team. Steal as he didn't have his dribble hammer to Altit. Doesn't want to get me too excited, and he lays it up and in. Nadav Alti with a quick 5-0 run, and the lead is balloon to nine. And the Wolfpack, all of their defenders are replaceable, so they're switching around their sets on the defensive side. The guy on the one through one at the top has been three different players, so that's been that's why they're so energized on every single possession. Shot there off the mark. Rebound, Mashiach misses again, and the... Field goal percentage for these Firehawks has got to be minimal at best as they have missed shots. They've even gotten offensive rebounds now, but they continue to miss. Here's Terrell. At the top of the key with help from Dower. Terrell looking for an open teammate. He finds one. It's Altit, and he knocks it down. That's Nimi Altit who hits that one, and it's 18-6. Valley Tora in this lead. Almost seems unsurmountable as they are tripling them in the point category. Jack, how do you defend identical twins when one is a righty and one is a lefty? How do you do that? Well, it's easier to distinguish them if one's a lefty, one's a righty. If they were the same, it would be even harder. And so it's easy for me, me in the booth to know which <laughs> one's Nimi and which one's Nadav. I did mention yesterday, I'm sure we have a little bit more of a viewership here for the championship. The easy way to remember it is they go alphabetical order and numerical order. Nadav is N-A. He's number 10. If you heard this yesterday, I'm sorry. Nimi is N-I, and he's number 12. That's how I remember it in my head. Dower misses a free throw, and just nothing going right for the offense from the Firehawks, shooting 17%. 0 for 6 from 3. With our esteemed statisticians behind me doing a great job. That one almost a steal. But it'll stay Valley Torah ball. 18-6 Valley Torah here in the second quarter of the Tier 1 Championship. Again, these teams played earlier a month and a half ago, and it was Shalhevet who won the game, but it came after a double-digit deficit, 16-point deficit to be exact, and they came back and won, so they're never out of it, but right now the offense is struggling. Torrell knocks that one down, and it's 20-6. to Ryan Torrell finally on the board. Took him almost... 12 minutes to get a basket, but he does there, and the lead is up to 14. Here's Muller, pass it right into Terrell, and then right into Altit. We'll go the other way, here is Sada. Finds Terrell to Altit for three, N not close. Sada rebound, Terrell wide open from around 12 feet out, but he misses, that's a shot, he's gonna want it back. Here's Muller, is that Muller or Dower? Tough to tell from my angle. That is Dower, excuse me, who misses the layup but gets fouled and he'll try once again to try and hit some free throws. And Shalhevet's got to take advantage of the foul trouble that Valley Tour is in. Nine fouls now, they've gone to the line, I believe six times, but they've had trouble at the free throw line. Sorry, only four times. They've had trouble at the free throw line and as another missed free throw, you say six times, it's because they went three times and they missed two front ends of one and ones. So right now they have, it's as if they have missed more free throws than they have. Right now two for five from the line. Dower with a chance to finally score. It's been a while since Shalhevet has scored. In and out again. So free throws not going in. Field goals not going in. Three pointers have not gone in yet. And here's Terrell, a little bit of a pressure from the Firehawks. Altit open, doesn't shoot it. Instead, they get into Komornik. Off the backboard, no. Hammer, a strong rebound. 
and they call an, a foul, and it's going to be on Hammer going over the back, and it will send the Virogs back to the free throw line. And maybe that's a good strategy from Valley Tora as they have not yet hit a free throw as you saw on the these one As you saw at the last break, Mimi LT goes to the bench. He's got three fouls already with 3.50 left to go. With 3.50 left to go in the second quarter. Here is the freshman Reamer who will go to the line. This time it's two shots. So that is the 10th team foul. In and out once again. Free throws not coming as easy as they should. As they have missed their last four. Reamer finally gets one to go in on the free throw line. 20 to seven. All Valley Torah here early. A foul there. Only the fourth team foul with 3.46 to go. Not the worst thing. And it will be Valley Tour basketball. We're seeing a little bit of pressure here. Changing it up. A full court press. Man, a man press. As they don't like zone. Great passing inside out. Terrell finds an open to Daval Teet. In and out. No good on a foul. That's got to be a foul. And it is not a smart one at all by Komornik, a little too overzealous, and it'll send Firox back to the free throw line once again. They haven't even need to worry about their half-court offense or their transition offense, as it's been free throws galore. As you see, the Firehawks like to play under control. That's their game, they cannot get away from it. Yes, they only have seven points right now as we cross the halfway mark in the second quarter, but they still gotta stay under control, and they gotta knock down their free throws. We've seen this tournament I had a crown, played a four overtime game after missing a bunch of free throws. Teams have always struggled in Sertrek hitting shots when it, free throws when they matter, but right now this game would be about 22-15 if they had made their free throws as two go down for Muller. Muller hits those two. They're still in the full court here as they are down 11. Torell, a lollipop to Nadav Altit inside. Oh, that's a barreling over him. And they call not even an offensive foul, but a travel regardless. Going back to Shalhevet, and this this fell full court, they've sped up Valley Torah. You know, Valley Torah, their offense at the beginning was slow. They got in a little bit of a groove. And of course, Coach Coleman, who I think is definitely top three best coach in this tournament. I don't want to say number one coach. Not to slight anyone, a great coach. Changes it up, and it's worked so far. If only that he can help them with their free throw shooting and three point shooting. Here's Muller. Kicking outside, a new face for Shalhevet. That's Ashigian. That's Jeremy Ashigian. Misses the runner, and it's Valley Toro basketball here. Under three to go in the first half. Ryan Terrell and the Valley Toro Pack are at a double digit lead. Great inside out passing. Komornik lays it up and in. And Valley Toro gets them back on the board after a little bit of a dry spell. 22 9. Here's Reamer. 1 3 1 back for the Wolf Pack with Terrell at the top. Inside, a great pass. Reamer travels. A little bit of nerves there. The freshman didn't want to get blocked. That was me, and I was good at basketball. I probably would have put that one up as he was very close to the hoop. And the pressure from Shalhevet is about is sort of a 2-2-1 two -two pressure trap. The close on Travel. That was, that was a very large travel. Sorry to interrupt you. An egregious travel, if you ask me. So they won't show a trap. But you'll see it when they get to a corner, when they get to the sideline, they'll use the sideline as another defender, and they'll try to grab the ball as or force a turnover as they did right there. We don't have travels as a stat on our on our scoreboard, but if you ask me, there's been at least seven combined. That looked like a travel, and once again, another travel. Both teams it's just sloppy play. Travel after travel, missed free throws also. So, well, when you play a pressure defense, which both teams are playing right now, you know, the nerves kick in a little bit. And right there, three, three travels in a row. Both teams didn't even cross half court. Terrell into Sada. I don't know why they're not pressuring, but maybe they don't want it. Here's Sada with Reamer on him. Gets it to Terrell. Now he gets it to Terrell. With Zaghi on him. Help. Defense there, and that causes a tip ball and a turnover. 
So the help defense there flustered Terrell into a bad pass. Here's Dower, and that's going to be a foul and two shots. And, you know, the referees, they're doing their job right now. I have no complaints. That was another good call. The teams are just both playing sloppy, both with the travels and the fouls. That was a not good rotation of the feet. I used to do the shotgun drill where you move your feet side to side. I don't know if that was a TABC gym class exclusive. I don't think so. And there, that was not good shuffling of the feet, and it led to an easy call for the ref. And we just received notice that Ben Hammer also with three fouls. So two Wolfpack players with three fouls. And Coach Schwartzberg right away upset after that foul call. You know, sometimes that's what happens when you're in a 1-3-1 one -one trap in the half court. you got to be aggressive. The whole point of the trap is to try to get the ball, try to force turnovers. And sometimes, you know, a byproduct of that is that, it, that you foul out a lot. Dower hit the first and hit the second. So two for two for Dower after he struggled early with the free throws. Struggling to inbound underneath. But gets around the, the trap there. Is Sato who gets it all teat, who finds an open man inside. And that's Hammy who lays it up and in. Yona Hammy hits that one, 24-11. And it seems like Shalhevet has the momentum, even though they're down 13. But they're going to need points to go with that momentum. Dower, a little bit of a contact, but good defense there. Here's Terrell. A nice move around the back, but then he dribbles it off a defender's foot. And then a steal there by Dower, so a hustle play after he lost. He missed shot on one end, a missed shot on one end, and then the steal on the other. That's Ashigian to Dower in the corner, knocks it down. Asher Dower, younger brother of Jacob Dower, who was a part of this three-peat of Tier 1 championship appearances and a member of Max Live, hits that three, finally to go, and an outside shot the Firehawks desperately needed to get this lead to 10 with under a minute to go in the half. Here's Sada calling out movement to Komornik inside, a sloppy pass, but Terrell gets it very close to the hoop, and a call, not a very loud whistle. But it was a whistle there, and that will send Ter Terrell to the line for two. Ryan Terrell so far in this game, only two points. Two of 24. Not a lot, as we mentioned, as you mentioned in the pregame to me. He averages 33 a game. Teams haven't even scored 33 in this, this tournament. Much different than his league. It must be. I've never seen a game in the Heritage League, but... And it seems to be these games are a little more low scoring. At this moment, we'd like to thank Yeshiva University for providing this unbelievable tournament. They've set the stage for us. The Office of Undergraduate Admissions has really given us a hand. Office of Athletics, as well as the Center for Jewish Future, and specifically Matthew Schwartz, Menachem Lewin, and Joe Benner have really helped us out with our broadcast, and we really appreciate their support. We're giving shout-outs to people who aren't listening as we could all see them. But there, right to Hammy. And a frustrating two points if you shall have it as an unfortunate bounce for the Firehawks. And now they're back on offense. Valley Torah playing their good pressure defense, which has only allowed 14 points until this last possession. Ashigi and Tarimer in the corner. Not close. Komornik pulls it out. And with under 10 seconds, we'll see if they can get a good look here. Here's Terrell coasting by, guys. Defenders. Altid, they call a foul there with one second left. And he will shoot three free throws. Will Altid to try to get this lead from 13 to 16. Jacob Perenstein is our first clipped keeper inbox, a valued member alumni of Max Live. Feedback at maxlive.com. I'd love to hear your critique. It's not so helpful when people say that I do a good job, but when people say I do a bad job, I can correct myself. Altid hits the first. Moving everyone away from the line is a smart strategy by Valley Torah. You don't want to foul. And you see, that's actually a strategy that Coach Simons told me during the regular season that they do often. The reason is because when you're crashing the boards, Sometimes you get yourself into an over the back or a reach when you try to strip the ball. And at this point in time, they already have 10 fouls. There's no need to put Shalhevet at back to the line, and that would be bad timing. So they're taking everyone off the line, not allowing a deep bomb pass either. Altit hits the second. 
Valley Tour is not going to take anything for granted. They know they've blown leads. One second left. Muller, good if it goes. Online, but a little bit short. Halftime here, Valley Tora 29, Shalhevet 14, and Ryan Terrell is not the main story. He only has three points. It's been a team effort. It's the guys that Valley Tora hasn't seen much production from by design, but for, Val for Shalhevet, that's what their design is, to let these guys beat them. And right now, they're doing just that. Guys like Hamiet, a few, Sada, Hammer, all three of those guys have done a great job. So at halftime, 29-14, shall have his offense. They gotta change something up if they wanna have any chance here. And we noticed, Jack, as you mentioned, it seems like Shalhevet still has some of the momentum. You know, they're down 15, they started off very slowly, but they went right into the full court. I call it a 2-2-1 trap. And one thing we've seen throughout their season is their resiliency. They've been able to play under pressure, you know, it's a full gym. These guys look like they're playing uh, during a practice. And one notable game they had this season, they actually played a Division I team, Heritage Christian. They were down 11 at half. And they came back and won by two. And that was without their captain, Ben Mishia. So they've, they've shown resiliency. They've done a great job of playing well under pressure. And I expect them to come out strong in the second half. Even though they're down by 15, they're being doubled right now. 29-14. So we will have a quick couple commercials from Step It Up, our halftime show sponsor throughout this tournament. And then we will be bringing Coach Elliot Steinmetz into our booth for a few words. Wait, you want to go to the booth or in, in person? Uh, people ask me, is, what's the difference between the European and American style of training and the game? Well, besides the obvious, you know, the pace of the game, the USA pace is much faster than the European pace. There is another difference that I'd like to point out here. Especially in a young age, you know, American kids are a little less tougher, I would say, than the European kids. And uh, a lot of campers here at Step It Up, I love to call pretzels, you know. Oh, pretzels, pretzels, pretzels! They're the stiffest pretzels! Oh my God, you all pretzels! Pretzels come in all kinds of, uh, you know, shapes, sizes, but I like the salty pretzels the most. One of the main characteristics of a salty pretzel is it has zero agility and it breaks easy, just like some of our pretzels, you know. When I train them, some of them make so many mistakes, I have this salty face, you know, like, oh my God, what are you doing? You know, just like a pretzel. But still, we love pretzels here. Hi, my name is uh, Chaim Chazak. I'm from Israel. I'm a basketball coach for 10 years now. So uh, when I was young, I was in the Israeli army. Uh, a lot of people say that uh, it influenced my coaching, but I don't, I don't think so. You know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a chill guy, you know. I don't I don't get angry that fast. <laughs> At Step It Up, the coaches uh, work the kids really hard, uh, but not me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do it like in a calm way.
and welcome back to the Max Jordan Athletic Center, Sydney Warsaw. Here alongside Coach Simish. Coach, I gotta mention it. How proud are you of your team winning the Skyline Championship for the first time? Uh, obviously, very proud. Uh, great group of guys. They really worked hard all year, fought through injuries, you know, fought through some adversity. But uh, second half of the year was really special. It's unbelievable to see this team come together, especially with the young guys, some of them coming in the middle of the season, yep. and everything just came together very well. It's definitely, in my, in my eyes, a testament to the coaching, the coaching staff. Can you tell me a little bit about your assistants? For those who don't know, two assistant coaches work behind the scenes. They might not get as much publicity, but what, what have they contributed this, this year? Absolutely, so we have, we have Daniel Tamir and Benji Ritholtz. Uh, Benji, and both of them have been with us for two years now. Uh, Benji's fantastic. He's prepares the scout as well as anybody I've ever seen, breaks down film, does a really good job in terms of our team chemistry, uh, leadership. He's a kid who obviously we only played a few years ago. And Daniel came in and has really run skill development for us and has done an excellent job with adjustments in game. And on behalf of Max Live and Yeshiva University, we'd like to congratulate you on the championship. Unbelievable win, unbelievable season for you guys. This tournament, let's talk about this tournament a little bit. It's been a very intense tournament this year. A lot of high level players what have you seen as the years have gone on with Jewish basketball in general and high school basketball? How has that, that improved over the years? You know, so I spoke about it a little bit over the weekend. The, the, the game has improved. The coaching has improved. The level of the players at the high school level you know, at the high school level has improved tremendously. I think it's in part, you got, you got camps like Step It Up. You have Hustle and Heart now. You have a bunch of different programs out there that these kids are training in the summers and off season a lot more than they used to. And you can see the level on the court has just been raised tremendously. Thank you, Coach. Again, as, again, we're looking forward to next season. We had a young team, Yeshiva University. We're looking forward to next year, bigger and better things. You know, we're going to win a game in the tournament next year. That's the goal. That's yes, my, you know, in my Absolutely. eyes. And we'll send it back to commercial after a few short messages. I'll be back in the booth with Jack. Oh. Stop. Thank you. Sarah Torgerman, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. The reason why I decided to come to Yeshiva University is because I wanted to continue my Jewish studies. I'm studying business intelligence and marketing analytics. Um, within that field, um, I see the opportunity to master data analytics, which I feel that's so relevant in today's uh, marketplace. In the past year, I've held two internships, one doing market research for a specialty food company, and the other doing merchandising for a wholesale jewelry company. On campus, I'm a proud member of the Tamid Group, which teaches me business leadership principles to allow me to consult for Israeli startups. I've had an amazing experience here so far, and I'm really looking forward to the rest of my time at YU. Back here in the Max Stern Athletic Center for this Tier 1 championship between the number one seed, Shalheve Firehawks, and the number two seed, Valley Toro Wolfpack. At the half, it's 29-14, the two seed. The Wolfpack leading this one. It is the Step It Up Basketball Halftime Show. And there are a few things I'd like to talk more about than Step It Up. Just a few quick notes for those wondering at home. New campus in New Jersey. I'm sure you've heard it before and you've seen the ads. Just to reiterate, that's my home state. It's a great state. Some call it the armpit. I call it home. And it's a beautiful place. Also, you have two to eight week options. So you have a lot of different options, you know, you're, you're going on those summer vacations. I used to go on family baseball road trips around the country. So you only have a few weeks, go to Step It Up, and you have plenty to plenty of options to choose from. Also, there's a new girls camp with under 15 seconds until the second half begins. And for more information about Step It Up, of course, you can visit their new and improved website, timetostepitup.com. You can email them, info at timetostepitup.com or you could call them at 
600-0908. Again, 888-600-0908. Again, we want to thank Coach Yoga Berdugo. He's the director of the program. He's really done a great job with the summer camp, and he's sponsored our halftime show throughout the tournament. We want to thank him as this is the last halftime show, stepping up halftime show for this Sarachuk tournament. We'd like to thank him again for his contribution. Yeah, yesterday I announced with him, with Coach Yoga Berdugo, great guy, uh, could keep an inbox as this game wears on and the viewership rises. A shout out to Clip Keep Us. We have a, a, a shout out, a, uh, a message into the inbox from Avram Orley and he loves the Jewish music. A manager at Robin Hood Capital Management. I don't know exactly what that is. The website doesn't work in your email, but if it's a real estate company, I am looking for a job. So maybe I could play all the Hebrew music you need. And as I was walking past the scoreboard, Vice Vice President Josh Joseph said, where's my shout out? I gotta shout him out, he's in the gym right now. He's been helping out with the new transition with Ray Berman and he's done a great job and he obviously a big Max fan, big YU basketball fan. Great to see him here and have him here in the gym. Speaking of good jobs, that was a great job by Zach Muller to knock down that mid-range jumper in the halftime. We got word from Coach Coleman and I could have said it myself, they were playing scared. Our silent interviewer Sammy Katz gave us that word. They were a little scary, Valley Tora, I admit. But that was a great play by Muller to get inside to the paint. And that's exactly what we're going to have to do here, as they like to play inside out, as most teams do. Leaving the guys that they want to beat them open, Komornik and Sada, that's all Teet, who shot it from very far out. A shot that they will live with. Val have it will. Misses. Here's Reamer, the freshman, going up against the trees. Looked like the guy was falling before he got the contact, and it'll be an and one. So the first two possessions for Shalhevet, strong takes to the rim, no fear on the eyes of the Firehawks. And there's a tendency when you're down by a lot to play a little bit out of control, to play with a little more forcefulness on the offensive end and right there you see shall have it they're still remaining calm they're playing their game valley tour and now they're trying to remain calm but as you see they took a unnecessary three from deep and that's not what the shot they're looking for you wonder if on the minds of valley tour is the game they played six weeks ago as the lead slips as this is a quick run of five to start the half pressure by the firehawks the Wolfpack get by it here. It's Nimi Altid, who did not play a lot in that first half, sitting out with foul trouble. Here's Sada. <laughs> if you look at this defense, it's almost comical. First, you'll have it five guys all behind the free throw line. They will, <laughs> pretty uh, interesting. They like to play, you know, there's no three seconds. So they could sit there as long as they want, and they will wait for Sada to beat them or make a pass. And they, he does, it's Terrell. Double team all over and pump fake. Second shot is good. Ryan Terrell, a nice shot there. As the lead is back to 12. And I tell you, jumping on his shot on the defensive side, it's not going to help. You're not going to be able to get higher than him when you're on defense. You just got to stay on your feet, get your hands up, and, you know, kind of hope he misses the jumper. Muller knocks it down. Zach Muller, a beautiful shot, shooting with no hesitation. Knocks that one in, and the lead is back to single digits. Here's Sada, twisting and turning around the press from Jalevin, and they're back into the half court, and we'll see some of that interesting defense. Jalevin's playing the man defense with much help towards some of the star players. Here they go, not a lot of movement, no one moving. Now we see something going. Terrell with Zaghi on him, and they're gonna call up a hand check foul there on Zaghi. And as you saw on the last play, a nice shot by Zach Muller. He was actually the MVP of their league, the Mulholland League. He's been a huge contributor for Shalhevet this season. It was a quick inbound, almost like a quick pitch. And they call a foul there on Dower. That's going to be Dower with a foul there as he pushed Komornik, who was trying to set a screen. And they will inbound again. Two quick fouls for Shalhevet. An inbounds pass we've seen many times teams struggle with that in this tournament. That one was clean. Here's Terrell. That was the third foul on Zaghi. Something to watch as he's taking Terrell man to man as this game has gone on. Here's Nimi Altit at the top of the key with a much smaller Dower on him. 
Taking his time to Sada inside to Terrell who tips off his hands out of bounds, going back to the Firehawks. And Valley Torres motion offense, they kind of use that about 10 seconds of the shot clock, then they go into it and they're trying to get Terrell across on a post up because his turnaround jumper has been very good and very effective for them. And a foul there is gonna be called on Valley Torres. It looked good, the press there they got to shall have it, but a pass to Dower and a little over aggression by Valley Tora leads to a foul. So a lot of quick fouls here. Four fouls in three minutes for both teams combined. Two aside. Here's Reamer. Double team coming again. A long pass to Mashiach. Beautiful feed inside. And Ben Mashiach lays that one in. And the lead all of a sudden is down to seven. Here's Terrell finds Altit. Nadav Altit. To Sada. We'll see how Valley Torah adjusts. As right now, the fans of Shalhevet are on their feet with good reason. Sada, if he could just shoot the three, he has loads of space, but he doesn't want to. To Hammer, to Altit, thinks about shooting it, doesn't, kicks it back out to Sada. Shot clock winding down. Hammer, no backboard, no rim. Air ball is what they call it, and it's going back to Mashiach, and that's a foul on Terrell. Not a smart play. Very far from the hoop. Stood in front of Reamer. And another team foul on the Wolfpack. And he was trying to stay not foul. He was just trying to put a little pressure on Shalhevitz ball handlers, as you've seen him do throughout the game. But as you see, he kind of got in the way, did not have his feet set, was moving, and they called it. Dower to Muller. The offense from the Firehawks is catching a little bit of fire here as they struggle throughout the half. That were long range, back rim, no. And that's gonna be a foul, or who are they gonna call it on? Staying here, I believe, is the call. It's gonna be on Terrell, is second? Or a double foul. They're gonna talk it over. I can hear, even though I'm wearing a headset, it sounded like they said, both teams to their benches. We are gonna discuss. I'm not sure what the call was. We have one person in the booth telling me it was a double foul. The you live in the valley chance, I've been waiting for those. It happens to have a great ring to it. I, I don't know anything about California. I've never been there. But apparently the valley is a place you don't want to live, according to uh, Shall Have It. I'm sure it's beautiful, though. And it's always good to see rivals taking each other on in a important game like this. You know, sometimes there's more of a rivalry from schools far. As we saw earlier in this tournament, there was a four overtime game between MTA from New York and Ida Crown from Chicago. But here we have a pretty big rivalry between two teams from California, as we'll put it. But it's been a pretty intense game so far. We've seen a little chippiness on the last couple possessions. Players hitting the deck, fouls being called. And it looks like it's going to be a jump ball. A or a double technical is called on Ben Mashiach and Ryan Terrell. I'm not sure what the call is. I, we'll get clarity. I have everyone telling me different things. I don't want to steer you wrong. I know Ryan Terrell definitely picked up a personal foul, as that is on the scoreboard. Maybe we will get some help from our sideline reporters as to what exactly was called. Regardless, Valley Tower possession and the lead here in the third quarter. Ryan Terrell has it after picking up two fouls on the last two possessions. See his offense. A screen there, and they're going to call a foul. Offensive foul. It looked like a moving screen on Hammer. They called it later than I expected. I think that was definitely the correct call. It was just a little bit late. So that was the call. You see some of the both teams getting a little heated here in this rivalry game here in the third quarter. And one ref ran over, called a foul. Looked like it was just going to be a regular personal. And then... The other ref dove in and tried to call the offensive. Coach Schwartzberg very upset about that one as now it's going to be Shalhevet's ball and the full court pressure is being shown and that is Nadav Altit bringing the full court pressure. So I got clarity on the call. It was a double foul, no technicals on Mashiach and Terrell. That is Terrell's second foul. Here is Shalhevet with the ball, down seven. 
no technicals. I know the fans really like technical fouls. Neither, no teams were given technical fouls on that one. Reamer to Dower, thinks about it, doesn't shoot it to Muller. Shot clock winding down. Back to Muller who shoots that one. A little bit of contact and one! Zach Muller with the three-pointer and he will have a chance to make it a four-pointer as he hit that one fading away with contact. A spectacular shot. And a timeout. I believe a timeout. Coach Schwartzberg is going bonkers at Altit. That's Nimi Altit who he is not happy with as that is his fourth foul and definitely a questionable decision. And I didn't even mention off glass from the corner. A highlight reel shot there and all of a sudden the lead has a chance to be down to three. Just when you thought Shalhevitz offense couldn't do much. They have exploded for 13 points in the first five minutes of this quarter. Well, a good timeout call right there by Coach Schwartzberg. He's trying to stop the bleeding. As we said, right before halftime, we didn't think Shalheva was going away. We thought Shalheva was going to come back. And they've shown, again, their resiliency to be able to keep calm, play their game, play smart. And we know Valley Torres had a little trouble this season and in this tournament playing smart basketball over stretch, stretches of time. And right there, it looks like it came back to bite them. At this moment, we'd like to thank some of our restaurant sponsors, really providing a great service to our Max Live broadcast staff, Sababa, first year sponsor on Yeshiva University's campus, provided a great lunch for us. And of course, Sammy's Bagels, providing breakfast throughout the tournament from us in Teaneck, great place. And we've really appreciated their donations and sponsorships. Muller to make it a four point play, he does. And uh, the lead is down to three. It is a 14 to two run to start this half. It's been all shall have it here. Terrell has a head of steam, finds an open hammer. Mashiach will come in and he will, a foul will be called. I don't know if it will be on Mashiach. The foul will not be on Mashiach. It will be on Dower coming from behind. So they beat the press there. Nimrod Altit on that play, as we mentioned, four fouls. Looked like he was staying in the game, but he is not. He did come out, but then he came back in, back to the bench, so he will stay on the bench. Hammer knocks that one down. And one thing you'll see, I think I mentioned it before, Ryan Terrell, he is primarily a scorer, but now he's looking to distribute, and there's no way a defense can focus on both things, as you see a nice pass down low to Hammer, and he draws the foul and hits the free throws. That's what you got to do. Maybe you're not hitting all your shots, but as long as you're distributing, you're playing a great game. Five, five, and five for Terrell. That's points, rebounds, and assists. Reamer inside to Mashiach, who draws a lot of defenders. Reamer shoots the three, and it's good. Reamer, the freshman, hits the three, and the first half, nothing was falling. Now everything's falling for Valley for Shalhevet, and it's a two-point game. Here's Altita to Terrell, and you gotta feel some of the nerves setting in here for the Wolfpack. As they had a big lead, Terrell doesn't feel anything though. Knocks that one down, got inside, shot it from his release point, which is really high and tough to stop. And the lead is back to four. Dower has it now for the Firehawks. Forget that first half, throw the film out. It's been a dominant third quarter and once again, Asher Dower hits that one. And this offense seems to be unstoppable and they will sit back smart. Move there by Coach Coleman. He knows without Nimi Alti, there's only two guys that can beat them in their eyes. And that's what they're going to do. It's going to be Zaghi on Terrell with a lot of help. Komornik blocked by Mashiach. What a block there by the senior. And now Komornik will check out after being blocked. Beton will come in. 35-33. We have ourselves... A good one on our hands. And we've seen Ben Mashiach, he's really been the glue for their team, the senior, as you mentioned. He's just a smart player, right place, right time always, as he gets the nice block right there. It looks like some of these role players for Valley Tour are just scared to shoot all together. Nadav is not a role player and he is not scared to shoot, but he misses there and shall have it with a chance to take their first lead of this game. Here's Asher Dower, a nice move, nifty shot, no good. 
off the rim. A good look there as he got by the defender near Sada, bringing it up to Altit to Terrell. Hammer uh, lowers his shoulder, no call, gets the rebound, misses. A save by Dowell right into the hands of the Wolfpack and Altit, and they'll reset with Terrell. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. All Firehawks here as the offense has looked flawless after looking like it didn't have any strengths in the first half. Valley Toro holding. Offense, a struggle in this one. In this third quarter, here's Terrell. Gets by Zaghi, but the help is there. He puts that one up, not even close. Back, the no rim, so the shot got rid, didn't reset. That's interesting, as Dower just bulldozers over. I believe that is Betone, and that's an offensive foul. It looked like Terrell could have been called there for a block as he got in the way. They didn't call that, but then they... Muller did not put on the brakes at all. He just bulldozered over Beton, Beton and an easy call there as Zach Muller is charged with the foul. And it's actually a 19 to six run for Jarl Hevitt to open up this second half as Nimi LT checks back in with four fouls. He's gotta be careful, but they're looking to get the last possession, get the last shot, get a bucket here. And it's been, as you said, all shall have it as we've seen a sighting of who is that in the corner over there, Jack? Please tell me. That is Rabbi Englard, the Rudziner. He's known to be everywhere, so if you're in a different country, different part of this country, if he's there later today, don't be surprised. Here's Terrell. Gets a good look. No good off the back rim. Rebound. That's going to be a foul on Hammer once again. And that will send Valley Torah. That will send Shall have it to a one and one Valley Torah into the penalty as over aggression, and that's four on Ben Hammer. So a lot of fouls. Too much aggression. Some of the fans in front of us are upset, but that was definitely a foul. Just when you miss a shot, you got to get back on defense and not worry about causing fouls. We've seen it too much in this tournament. Just a little bit frustrating as a fan and in me. As no reason to foul with one second left. That's just... It's unacceptable. Not only that, now you got two players who are in intense foul trouble, one more and they're gone, and you know that what that means. That means they can't play as tight defense. They're not going to be as effective in the traps. And Coach Horst was going to have to dig into his bench a little bit come the fourth quarter. Reamer does something they, another thing they couldn't do in the first half. Hit front ends of one and ones, and that leads to a second opportunity with a chance to tie. It's good. The freshman showing no nerves. And this game is tied at 35 with one second left. Shot off the netting that we have on top. We will send you at a commercial break. Hi, my name is Rafi Wiesen. I'm from Teaneck, New Jersey. I'm a senior studying psychology and business. I came to IU after spending a year and a half in the Golani Brigade of the IDF. I'm currently serving as president of the YU IDF Veterans Club. We work to build relationships with all the different veterans who have returned and to form a support group for anyone who needs. I also work together with the university to create a very meaningful and impactful Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzmud ceremony on campus. I'm thankful to be part of an institution that waves the Israeli flag and proudly supports Israel. Time for commercials here. We'll only give you a quick one. 35-35, start of the fourth quarter. I knew it was 35-35. The scoreboard a little bit delayed. A lot going on there. They have a lot to worry about, but it is 35-35. And you can't really ask for a better game so far. Shalhevet, the, through the first half, scored 14 points, and they did not look like they had any chance. But similar to the first meeting between these two teams back in early February, a dominant third quarter, and we have ourselves a tie ball game going to the fourth. And Jack, I just want to give some recognition to the earlier games today. The Tier 2 championship won by your home school, your alumni, alumnus, Alma mater. Alma mater, okay. 47 to 40, TBC beat Berman in the Tier 3 championship. MTA beat Barron. And don't Earlier. forget the Tier 4, the Battle of Philly. In that one, Kohelet, the co ed school, beat Masifta, the all boys school, in that one. I'm sure they'll be talking about that one down in Philly for years. Muller to Zagi on offense. Mashiach, a lot of movement, a lot of passing here. The double team came, that's a shot no good there by Ashigian coming off the bench. And here's Terrell, tie ball game. Throw those first three quarters in the bag, it's 0-0. Zero, zero. 
for both teams as back in this weird defense, a man defense with everyone standing very far. Terrell, interior passing, and that's exactly what Shalhevet wants. And now Muller will go on the fast break, draws some contact, and it's going to be a foul on Altit. A lot of fouls from Valley Toro all game long. This time it will be Zach Muller who will go to the line for two. And that one coming up on the dot. I just want to make sure make that clear. Two for him. The dot Altit, that is. And great push by Muller. You know, have the consciousness to push the ball on the fast break after an errant pass, and he gets to the line. Muller, the leading scorer for the Firehawks. He has 14 points with a chance to make it 15. For those that don't know the Altit story and you're wondering, you were watching last year's tournament and you didn't see them, well that's because they were on the beaches of Netanya playing in Israel, came over for their senior year to Valley Torah, twins, two of four boys, one playing professionally in Israel, one played Division I in America at Bryant University in Smithfield, Rhode Island, and right now they're looking at their first a chance to win the school's first ever Tier 1 championship. Ryan Terrell out to Sato, finds an open man. It's inside. A shot no good there. That one's Hammy. And this is really exactly what Coach Coleman told me. He said, let me let the role, let me let the role players for Valley Tour beat me. And right now they're just not hitting shots. No, not looking was Reamer. A fortunate bounce off his shoe. And a timeout is going to be called a 30 for Shalhevet as the offense looked lost on that possession. But Shalhevet leads the one seed. I was questioning the seeding as this first half was unfolding. But right now, they look like the more disciplined team in terms of fouling and the more methodically well-run offensive team as well. And this is their first lead of the game. Now 6.30 left in the fourth. It's taken a while. At this moment, I'd like to give a quick shout-out to my family watching in Chicago right now. Some of them... Should be probably be in school, but they're texting me that they're not. So good to know that people watching from across America, and it's presumably also in Israel and other countries, for this championship game of the 27th annual Red Sarachek basketball tournament here at Yeshiva University. Thank you all for tuning in, and hopefully we'll have an exciting six and a half minutes to go. Clip to keep the inbox. Feedback at maxlive.com. I was, I was a little bit worried about the viewership as this game was turning into a blowout. Right now, I'm sure there are many a, a faithful tuned in for this one. Clipped Keep Inbox, all you need to do is send an email to feedback, spelled just as you imagine it, at maxlive, that's M-A-C-S-L-I-V-E. For those wondering where the name come from, Maccabees is the YU Yeshiva University men's athletics, men's and women's athletics team name. Max, and this game is live. MaxLive.com. Here's Reamer. A little bit of pressure from Valley Tour as we've seen throughout this game. Zagi to Mashiach. We haven't seen him touch the ball from so far out. We'll see if he gets into his, the pain where he's been more of a factor. Moeller knocks that one down. Zach Moeller has awoken from his three-game grave as he has been on fire here in this game. Four-point lead for Shalheva, and Valley Toro is going to need answers fast. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter of this Tier 1 championship. Timeout. Valley Toro, Coach Schwartzberg, wants to talk it over as their offense has gone absolutely ice cold. No points in the fourth quarter, only six in the third quarter. Very similar to yesterday's game between Valley Tor and Mag and David. It was Valley Tor who shut down Mag and David in the second half. And right now the same seems to be happening for Valley Tor. What's been questioned throughout this tournament is can the role players of Valley Tor be just enough for numbers 10, 11, and 12 in red? And right now the answer is no, as there's been a lot of missed layups, sloppy interior passing, and not a lot of points for Valley Tor as they are down by four. And with the Shalhevet offense the way it has been recently in this the last quarter and a half, it's going to be tough for them to win if they don't score. First to 40 was the model for Shalhevet, and right now they're almost there as it's 39-35. Jack Gantrow alongside Simi Warso here for this game. Torell gets inside, lays it up, no good. A strong rebound by Hammer. 
and a foul is going to be called on the ground. We'll see who will go against. I believe it will be Dower. No, it will be Mashiach who gets the call. It's number five. It's his third foul. Three for foul for number five. Ben Mashiach. The feedback at Max Live is starting to to turn a little bit. People are starting to send in. Maybe we'll get a chance to give some shout outs from our Clip Keeper inbox. Right now, Valley Toro would less rather the shout outs, more rather the points. As Sada will take it from the top of the key here. Offense has been non existent. Here's Terrell with two guys on him. A high release and one. Ryan Terrell, and that's going to be on Zagi, I believe, his fourth, if I remember correctly, as he got him on the arm. And it is his fourth, and the lead is down to two. Terrell with a chance for the three point play. Not close. Hard off the back iron there for Terrell. Shall have it with the ball. Firing on all cylinders here in the second half on offense. And right now it's Muller with Terrell on him. They have not been afraid in this second half. Step back, knocks it down, a three. Zach Muller with Terrell draped all over him. Hits the three, I believe. It looked like the ref was calling for a three. The scoreboard will have to be updated. 42-37, shall have it leads. I'm going to stand by my word. I, it was a three-pointer. There they call a foul on Dower. As you noticed, they have switched Dower on Terrell. We'll see if anyone else notices the score. So the ref overruled himself, apparently. He said three, but apparently he was overruled into a two. So don't expect one more point for Shall Have It. 41-37. Terrell, the first free throw is good of the one and one. And once Ryan Terrell starts to get to the line, it's going to be tough for them to stop. He's into double figures now, finally, with only 4.37 left. Offensive rebound there by Hammer. Altit for three, no good. And the rebound is gotten by... <laughs> Shall have it, and the story of this one, another foul on the wrong side for Valley Torah. Not a smart foul there as they send Shall have it to the line for free, not even having to work on offense. Now Shall have it also in foul trouble. They've got eight, Valley Toro with nine, so both teams having trouble tonight keeping the other off the line, and we know both of these teams, especially when we've got high seeds, they're not going to miss a lot of free throws. And as I said, it's going to be a key to the game. Both teams doing very well from the line. Muller has been the star of this one. He looked the lights out from all three phases of this one. The line, the two, and the three. As the lead is up to five for Shall Have It. Does Valley Torah have an answer? Nimi Altit back out there with four fouls. We'll see if he plays a factor. Terrell with two guys on him, and they're not even hiding it now. Terrell gets inside and knocks it down for two. A little bit too easy there. As you don't want to get up a shot from that close if you're the defense. And now the three, four really tall defenders out there for Valley Torah. A little bit of pressure. Here's Reamer, the freshman. Decides better of driving inside and passes it out to Muller, the junior, has been very good recently. No call, even there was some contact. There they get the call and one. Zach Muller has been unstoppable here in this fourth quarter. And a technical foul. Put it on the books. That's going to be against Nadav Altid, I believe. We'll see who it's called on in one second. But count it, two points, a free throw, and the technical foul with this chance for a chance, sorry, a chance for Shalhevet to extend this lead even further. And at this point in time, 
the refs kind of had enough of the talking. Too much talking to the refs. And they're going to, you know, Tom, let the coaches talk to them. You know, you, you can't have players yelling in their ears, and it's just too hard for them to do their job. And I, I appreciate that call right there, you know, not letting the game get out of control. And a lot of fouls being called, as you see, they're going to go to the line again. That's 10 on Valley Torah. I'll have it right now with a five point lead. You see the frustration on the Valley Torah players' faces as they've struggled. They have four players with four fouls. They have Nimi Altit with four fouls. Nimi Altit. Ben Hammer. Well, no, they actually have. That's a foul out for Ben Hammer on that one. As you can see on the board, five fouls for number 15. But there is a lot of foul trouble for Valley Torah. And to me, if you want my honest opinion on it, it's just been very undisciplined basketball on both ends of the court, both offensively and defensively. There's been a few calls at the rim, but for the most part, it's been sloppy footwork in terms of getting in the half court defense and then some fouls on the glass trying to get offensive rebounds. And as the game has gone on, Coach Coleman has instructed the Firehawks to really double hard on Ryan Terrell, but as that's happened, he's even played better. He's been hitting his shots, and it's just kind of lit a fire under him, and he's been able to knock down a couple jumpers past the double team on the past few possessions. Muller misses the first free throw, the first thing he's missed all half. And just to confirm my original beliefs, it was Nadav Altit with the technical foul. It's his third. Nimrod Nimi with four. Muller misses both for the technical. And now he will shoot one for the and one that he so beautifully finished on the last play. These two are missed opportunities, and Muller knocks the third one down, so the lead is up to six. Coach Coleman firing up his troops. They have seen a major change in this one. Through the first half, they only have 14 points. And right now, with 46, it's been a great performance. I may have missed that, but on the third shot, as you said, it was the for the and one. There was no one else on the line. Maybe the first one for the, for the and one, because there was no one on the line. If he would have missed it, then he would have just been able to get his own rebound. Valley Torah basketball here, six point lead as the rain retained possession. Valley Torah has the ball. Three minutes, 15 seconds left here in this tier one championship. Torell an open look for three off the back rim, no. I don't think he's hit one three all game long. And Reamer will take it now. With the ball in the lead, a six point lead that is, largest of the game, a strong take, no good, rebound there by Altit, and Terrell will push. This is his chance to cement his legacy here. That one off the backboard, no good. Cement his legacy as a Sarachek. I don't want to use the word legend, but winning a championship and the first for a school would be pretty big, but without it, there will be a gaping hole in his resume. Right now, Valley Torah, Muller inside to Reamer, who are amongst the trees. Fumble on the ground, and they're going to call a jump ball there. The possession arrow will go to Valley Torah if the board is correct, and it is. Valley Torah basketball. Change that possession arrow. Six-point lead. Shall have it. Again, their third straight Tier 1 championship. They've lost to DRS in 2016, to Frisch in 2017, and now we are in 2018, and they have a chance against the non-Yeshiva League team to win the Tier 1 crown. Here's Altit. At the top of the key, Nimi Altit, the lefty. A nice pass there back to Altit with a man on him. It's Hammy and Betone along with the three stars for Valley Tour. Right now it's Terrell who has it with Dower on and misses that. Good defense. And now they call a foul. I believe it's going to be on, on Reamer, that is, holding Terrell. And that will send him to the line. We'll see. I believe it will be a one and one. Maybe it was in the air. I haven't seen any indication from either ref. And it's a one and one. So a one and one for Terrell. That's the ninth team foul. Ryan Tomell with 12 points. He is shooting 15 for 5 for 15. And as I, I was correct, 0 for 2 
as a team, Valley Tor has really struggled from three-point range, two for ten. And that is why the Firehawks have really packed it in on defense, made Valley Tor beat them from outside, which they have not done at all. Terrell also struggling from the line today. Shooting 40% before this one. Hits that one. The lead is down to five. Two minutes, three seconds to go. Valley Tora and Shell have it. One versus two, the matchup. As Coach Coleman told me, these teams have been waiting, especially Valley Tora. Maybe he's a little bit biased, but he said they've been waiting for this all year. They've had a scout at almost at every single Shell have it game. Valley Tora has been in attendance, whether a scout, a coach, or a player. So they've seen this team play multiple times. They've seen them play every time. And they have been ready, waiting for this game on this Monday afternoon. Morning on the West Coast. Now we're into the afternoon and a sloppy play by Reamer. Altit, that looked like it was off his leg. But they keep it. Valley Tora basketball, it looked clearly off by Tora if you ask me. But the refs call it Valley Tora basketball. So a questionable call there. Four point game, 149 to go. Looked like the refs were a little out of position because of the transition there. Regardless, it's going to be Shalhevit who's going to have to stop Valley Tora. A nice poke from Dower. Taking Torelli. He's done a great job since Zaghi picked up his fourth foul. Four point game, 145 to go. And he, no inbounds play. They find Torell open, wide open. A layup there is good. That one's Beton. And a timeout, or that's. That's Sada, excuse me, who hits that one. Timeout, Valley Torah after the made basket. The lead down to two. And again, everyone's eyes following the star player. And they just forget the man coming back door for an easy bucket. Valley Torah, I mentioned Shell have has been in some tough pressure situations. Valley Torah also has. They played, they actually won Cooper, the Cooper tournament at the beginning of the season in four overtimes versus Milken, who is not at this tournament. but. One difference in that tournament, no shot clock, and I was watching that game, and Valley Tora won the tip and held the ball the entire overtime possessions. So that happened in three different overtimes before they finally hit a shot. Here with the shot clock, newly second year we've had it here, and it's been a huge improvement for this tournament. We have to thank the, you know, the Sarah Track Committee for implementing that, and in the last minute 35, sure, that is sure to be a factor, the 35 second shot clock. The score right now, 46-44, in the fourth quarter of this Tier 1 championship on a beautiful Sunday, Monday afternoon here at Michigan University. Zach Muller for Shalhevet, the number one in the white, blue, and red jerseys, leading all scores with 24 points. Terrell has been held to 14. 135 to go. Two-point game. Valley Torrance shall have it. The inbound goes to Dower. Back to Reamer, the freshman. And here's the star of this one, Zach Muller. With 24 points, a double team comes. A lot of pressure from the Wolfpack. Back to Dower, who's been quiet lately. Nimi Altit on Reamer. A lot of size, not a lot of movement. We'll see. They're trying to run a play. It looks like they are using the shot clock violation call as their play call. Muller trying to create space, throws a long one up, no good. That should be a shot clock violation, and it is, as that one did not hit the rim. And it will go Valley Torres' way. And they're trying to say, Charles Heather players trying to say that the ball did hit the rim, and as they corralled the rebound, the clock did go off as it may not have reset. And the clock, the regular clock did run down after that shot clock violation was called so the refs going over to the table they're going to see exactly now they do they do add 10 seconds now we got a minute and two left in this fourth quarter that was a good call there by the referees it did not hit the rim and it will be valley Tora ball with only 62 seconds left here shall have it leading valley Tora. they've trailed most of this first half shall have it trailed the whole first half it took until late into the second half where they got a lead and they've held it for the last few minutes here, it's Valley Tora basketball. Down by two with under a minute to go. Here's Nimi Altit, the transfer from Israel. Along with him is Sada and Hami. 
Ben Hammer fouled out in this one earlier. Here's Terrell, who has a lot of guys on him, but it's too hard to stop him from that angle as he hits the shot from two feet out. And this game is all tied, and we will have most likely one last shot as the shot clock is turned off. 25 seconds to go here, Tier 1 Championship. It's Zach Muller, the star. Fans on their feet in the Max Stern Athletic Center. 15 seconds, I have to stand on the bleachers as it is tough to see. We have 10 seconds, Muller with Sada on him. There, we'll run a play, Mashiach comes for the screen. Muller has an open man, it's Dower. Dower kicks it inside, shoots it off the backboard, back rim, no good. And we will go to overtime in the Tier 1 Championship. 46-46, we will keep it here as this game has lived up to all expectations. Valley, Torah, and Shalev at the rivalry out west. These teams played earlier in the year, as we mentioned. Valley, Torah lost a big lead there, and they will be saying the same thing about this one if they fall here in the overtime period. As Shalevet came back from a large deficit, it was 15 at the half. They came back and they had a dominant third quarter, and the teams traded blows in the fourth. It's gonna be four minutes on the clock here. 46-46. Coach for Shalhevet, Coach Coleman told me, first to 40. They scored 41st, but right now they're looking at a new ball game here in this fifth period. We saw four overtimes in yesterday's MTA to crown game. We'll see what's in store for us right now. A wondrous tournament so far. You know, so many great games culminating with a very big weekend Shabbaton, I know Jack, you were there. Really appreciate all that YU has done to set up this tournament, to bring in all these schools. A lot of effort, time and effort has gone in. And we would like to thank our staff, our Max Live staff, around 50 students spending their time, especially during midterm week, to come help us, specifically Justin Safier, Moshe Kaplan, Yusome Asky, Max Hoffman. These are our producers. They've been with us at all seconds of this tournament. And it's been a wild ride and a very very fun tournament for us here at Max Live. And four minutes on the clock, as you mentioned, 46 46, essentially 0 0 for a four minute game. The fans not as loud behind the benches as usual due to these teams being out of town, but the crowd does not lack the intensity and the feel. With a standing room only on the near side, the side you don't see as well, is packed with players from all schools, parents, and fans alike. Mashiach and Terrell the tip. Four minutes on the clock. A rather random overtime amount of time if you ask me. The tip goes to Valley Torah. And it's Nimi Alti with Zaghi on him. Both of them have four fouls. Something to watch as this overtime plays out to Terrell. Terrell has led this team single-handedly here at the end of this game. Scoring points at will and getting to the line. Here he is now. Does he have four more minutes in him? Ryan Terrell gets double teamed, shoots it anyway, and knocks it down. Defense couldn't have been better on that possession, but Ryan Terrell just a few inches too tall for the Shaleva defense, and the lead is back to Valley Tora. Here's Dower, who had a chance to win it there. And a moving screen is going to be called on Reamer, and it will be going the other way. An offensive foul. Valley Torah basketball. And it appears this game has gone later than most Sarachek tournaments game, 415 here on the East Coast. And some teams even actually filing out right now, assuming they have flights coming up. But we're set for a wild finish here in the championship game. One thing to know for those diehard Sarachek fans, you notice Championship Monday also had a third place game here at the Max Stern Athletic Center. That is what caused the delay. It was a wild game though, so it was worth your while. Here's Terrell, has a step. Now he's got double team, puts it up, air balls the shot as he was a little bit too close for his own good and Muller. Shalevitz offense has been a little stagnant recently. And the double team coming on Reamer, the freshman who finds it open, Muller, that foul is gonna be called and that's gonna be five on Nimi Alti. He will foul out. Once again, a little bit too aggressive on that one. He sh probably should have stayed home if he Wanted to not foul, and that will also send Muller to the line, who has been 50-50 from the line. Those aren't exact numbers, but he did miss two free throws on the technical foul, and now he'll go back to the line. Nimi Alti with five. We'll insert it into the ball game 
for Valley Tora is Lee Liorel Bitone, who played sparingly throughout this tournament. Muller, the first one, is good. And sometimes you gotta dig deep into your bench even when you're not accustomed to it. Court Schwartzberg going to another guard, the junior. Muller in and out, spun in and then back out and the lead for Valley Tora is now at one. 241 to go, Dower a little too aggressive. Terrell trying to draw a foul, he doesn't get one there. And here's Nadav Altit, the only Altit left in this one. To be Tonu, close to a carry there, no call. Terrell pulls up, that's been his spot all tournament and he knocks it down. Ryan Terrell from the elbow and the lead is up to three. Great patience by Terrell, getting to spot, not forcing anything and getting a good look. Muller with contact on the ground and one! Zach Muller put a lot of air under that one at the top of the glass and fell in. And he will have a chance to tie this game up at the line. And Muller, 25 points tonight. He's really gone all out and they left it all on the floor. He's going for another and one and the defense collapsed and he was still able to loft it over them. And Liel Sada on that one fouled out. The senior leader, I was speaking to some of the players over the weekend, as you mentioned, I was there for Shabbos and they said without Liel Sada, the team would fall apart. Known to many as a glue guy, a term that's been used very often recently in all forms of basketball. Well, he's their glue guy and now they are without their glue as he fouls out. Muller with a chance to tie this game from the line. The junior guard has led this team throughout this season and especially in this game. Timeout, Coach Coleman. It will be a full timeout. 50-50, 2.13 to go, Tier 1 championship. I'm Jack Gancho alongside Simi Warso. And we have been delighted by this one. Nimi Altit has fouled out, Ben Hammer has fouled out, Liel Sada has fouled out. Three of the seven usual rotation players for Valley Tora. There have been a lot of fouls in this one, especially Valley Tora. They've been over aggressive on both sides of the ball. Shalheve, a quick recap for those that are just tuning in now, had a very slow start. He only scored 14 points in the first half and to be honest, it didn't even look that good. Some sloppy plays, missed shots from all across the court. A lot of missed free throws also. But as the third quarter picked up, it was a dominant third quarter for Shalhevet. They took the lead early in the fourth. As the fourth went on, they had the lead most of it. But Ryan Terrell willed his wolf pack to tie this game. Asher Dower had a chance for Shalhevet to win it at the buzzer. He didn't get it to go. And that's where we are now, Simi. Overtime of the Tier 1 Championship, 50-50. Valley Torah and Shalhevet, two teams that play in California. They played already this season, Shalhevet won it. But any, everyone involved knew this was anyone's game. And that's exactly what we've seen here. And if you're Shalhevet, you gotta feel confident right now. As you said, Valley Torah's had a couple of their players fall out as other seven rotation players, three of them out right now. You gotta feel confident, they've been playing their game. They've been staying calm. And if they continue to do that, there's 213 left. They should be in a good position. You have to assume you're gonna see the same defense for Shalhevet in that man defense. Whistle blown. There seems to be some liquids on the court. It's a good thing why you gave out towels today in this one. Nice blue towels. And they will use those newly May towels to clean the floor. A little the water boys for Valley Tora seem to do too good a job on that one as there is water on the court. Shall have it staying in the man defense. A lot of help on Torrell. And it will have to be, usually has to be, the role players once they get set in their defense where they're they're forcing Valley Tora, Valley Tora stars specifically to pass it out. We'll see what happens here. Shot clock back to 30. 2.05 to go here. 
Here's Beton at the top of the key, replacing Sada at the point. Looking for something, he's got a lot of room. He, he doesn't need to check it. He doesn't need a single it, excuse me. As he could shoot it if he wants, he doesn't want to though. Here's Terrell. Terrell fading away, foul called on Dower. And Terrell will go to the line a little bit too much contact there. And that is his third foul. Another thing that has changed as this game has gone on, it was Benny Zaghi who always guards the best guy, guarding the best guy in Ryan Terrell, but he went into foul trouble, four fouls. Remarkably for him, he has not fouled out. That was toward the beginning of the fourth quarter. And Terrell short on the first one from the line. He has actually struggled from the line more than I would have expected. But we'll see here if he can hit the second one. They try to get Valley Torre back in front. The second one is good. 51-50. Valley Torre leads. Back and forth game here. Tier 1 championship. It shall have its turn to answer. Reamer. Again, as I mentioned, only a freshman. To Dower, the junior. A younger team. Shall have it. Throws out at you. Timeout Coleman not happy with the offense. 11 seconds into that shot clock. Nothing going. So that leaves you with 19 seconds. And on the last possession, if you're the Wolfpack, you got to be happy. Ryan got fouled, got to the line, got a free trip. If you're Shaw Heaven, you also got to be happy. You force him to take a tough shot, and you force him to make mistakes. But you don't want to foul. you got to stay on the ground. And we've seen multiple times, I've mentioned it multiple times, Terrell getting to his spot, lifting up, He's made a couple of nice passes, and shall have it. When they're doubling, they're leaving somebody open, and that just can't be the person under the basket. You know, Valley Torre has not looked to shoot so often, and you got to leave a person at the three-point line open, not a person under the basket. And I'm sure Coach Coleman has, you know, let him know that the rotation has to be pretty accurate, especially in the closing moments of a crucial game, the championship here at the Syracuse tournament. A full timeout, plenty of time for both teams to discuss strategy here with Shalhevit retaining possession of the basketball, down by one with 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Valley Toro is going to have to stay strong on the defensive end if they want a chance to hold this lead. 129 left in this game. Inbounding right in front of Coach Coleman is... Reamer to Zagi. Steps in front of the timeline and they'll reset. Double team coming. No one helping. And another timeout from Coach Coleman. I don't know if we can get word from the sideline on how many timeouts are left. But that is back-to-back -back timeouts. And a smart one as the ball did not look to be in good hands. As there was a double team coming with no help. Not exactly what you're looking for. And it's weird because they were just in a timeout. You know, they... They clearly drew up a play to get out of that pressure, and it didn't work. The rotations didn't come in. You know, kudos to the Wolfpack for getting to that double team quickly. They let the ball go inbounds, and immediately, immediately, immediately went for the double team. Two timeouts for both teams left. Thank you, Sammy Katz, on the sidelines. A full timeout here. Shalhevet looking like they are not going to sit down, though. Coach Coleman... I don't think he wants them to sit down after that. Coming out of the timeout, couldn't get anything going. Here they have a second chance to take the lead. Now with 13 seconds left on the shot clock and 124 in the game. It is still shall have a basketball as this game has slowed down. And Valley Toro will set in their defense, the man defense, inbounding from the same spot. Almost deja vu back to Reamer. 11 seconds. I, I complimented Coach Coleman's out-of-bounds plays. We'll see if one big moment here. If he comes up and they're going to call a foul. Dower falls. They call a foul there. It's going to be on Beton with the push. And that will send Dower to the line for two. And in these waning moments, it's time to see who is the most well-coached. This really, both teams are pretty evenly matched. They played four quarters and really five quarters of even basketball. And now we're going to see who's going to make the mistake first. That's what we're going to see. Dower hits the first. He struggled a little bit also from the line. 
But like most of these Firehawks, they're not going to look at the first half tape for anything. Free throw shooting is not an exception. Second one in and out. And this game is tied once again. 70 seconds to go here. Tier 1 championship. Jack Gantra alongside Simi Warsaw. That was a long possession. For Shalava with a couple of fouls and a couple of timeouts. But now Valley Toro with a chance back on offense. Dower needs to be careful. He picked up a foul on the last possession. The last thing you want to do is send Terrell to the line again. Playing very strong defense and he gets a piece of it. And then he... Backcourt violation. An over and back called on Ryan Terrell, the younger player, Osher Dower, knowing with he has help behind him, showed no signs of letting up. And he got a poke, and then he got the backcourt violation. Muller created a little bit of space there, a little push. Here he has a head of steam, he gets to the rim, and they're gonna call a charge. Coming off the bench, Akiva Komornik. And that is exactly what he's in the ball game to do. Play good defense. There he draws the charge. And it'll be timeout. Valley Torah now with possession. 44 seconds. If you're looking on the bright side of a Shalevit, as a Shalevit fan, probably have yourselves a two for one and you will get the ball back. You, assuming there's no offensive rebounds or shot clock resetting, you have a chance to get the ball back. But first, what does Valley Torah have in store for us out of this timeout? They know exactly what's coming from. They know exactly what's coming if from the shall have a defense, excuse me. It's gonna be the man, it's gonna be Dower on Terrell, it's gonna be the guys packing the paint. What do you think Valley Tora is gonna do right now? Well Valley Tora might be looking to foul. It's possible they may be forcing some of these bench players to take some free throws. Again, they're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but they've had a lot of trouble stopping Terrell on the drives, especially in this overtime, and an interesting strategy we're hearing from our sideline reporters, but it's very possible to be looking for that foul. When you see, on have it on the side of Valley Tor, when you see a guy like Muller driving to the lane, he's scored all day today. He's been on the offensive, he's been a huge offensive fan. When you see him coming to the lane, you just gotta step in front of him and get the charge, and great defense, great knowledge of where you are on the court. As, as they always say, KYP, know your personnel. You see him coming in the lane, step right in front of him, and you saw that one coming from a mile away. For the Wolf Pack, it's Yona Hamion, along with Komornik, Beton, Altit, and Terrell. As you mentioned, that is an interesting strategy if Hammy or Komornik touches the ball to put them on the line. We'll see if that actually comes to fruition here. Here's Beton calling out the plays. Again, Sada fouled out. He is usually the point guard. We'll see if changes anything. Terrell with two guys on him. Spin, shoots, gets the roll, but it doesn't go in. And Mashiach with a strong rebound. And they're going to call a foul on Valley Tora. It was a call that was made early. It took a few seconds for him to make the call just to explain exactly where it happened. And it will be a two-shot So it's not a foul, excuse me. The referees, I don't know if I'm just doing a bad job of announcing or there's been a lot of questionable calls. There, apparently they called a timeout. I don't know if it's such questionable calls, more of it's hard for them to communicate to us. It's loud over here. We don't know exactly what the call is being made. We're trying to find out. And right there is, seems like they may have called a timeout as they're going to their benches. But you gotta notice, great boxing out by Shalhevet. Great job to block out Ben Mashiach. Gets position, grabs the board, and they get a timeout, and they were able to retain the ball. And 51-51 in overtime, 21 seconds left here. And we're ready for another wild finish here in when the I championship. Say, when I said questionable calls, I didn't mean questionable in terms of the call, more of questionable in terms of what the call was. There was a timeout, as you mentioned, shall have it. 21 seconds left, shall have it with a chance, their second chance for a game-winning shot. As it, Dower, who missed the first one at the end of four quarters. Here we are at the end of the first overtime, the four-minute overtime. And with 21 seconds left, it will have to be either Muller 
or Gower, they've been the guys mostly to shoot or maybe Mashiach inside. Let's see how this play is run. Coleman talking to Mashiach as the play goes on. 15 seconds to go here. Tier one championship, Valley Tour and Shalevet. Zach Muller has been the leading scorer for both teams. The clock is winding down, pressure from Valley Tour. Mashiach with five seconds left. A beautiful feed inside and a foul with 2.5 seconds left. It will be Shalevet at the line with a chance to take the lead. And you know, last year, Shalevet lost on a very questionable block charge call against Frisch. And throughout this season, I've heard refs won Saracek as a chant. Well, right now, that was a little bit less controversial, but it's a foul, and they will have a chance. The freshman point guard, Zeev Reamer, who will go to the line with a chance, two chances, to take the lead with 2.5 seconds to go. A little bit of a buzz from the crowd. I'm not sure who they're rooting for. Seems to be an impartial fan base. Reamer hits the first. Firehawks take the lead with 2.5 seconds left. Both teams have timeouts, if our sideline reporting was correct. Reamer, again, a freshman, has a chance. And Coach Coleman looks like he's going to call a timeout after a made free throw, so if there may be a timeout afterwards. Ball cannot advance, so they're going to have to dribble the ball up the court, get past half court, and then call a timeout if Valley Toro wants it. Reamer hits the second timeout. Not Valley Tora, even though the ref thought it was going to be Valley Tora. It shall have it, and I like this. You know, you speak about advancing the ball. College basketball is better without advancing the ball. I think it's great. I think it makes for some highlight plays. And right now we have a chance of one of those. Advancing the ball is an NBA gimmick. Keep that away from our, this sport. We'll see what Coach Schwartzberg can draw up here. 53-51 with a chance for their first ever championship, Valley Tora. But they're going to need uh, some heroics. And right now, this is, talk about coaching, with two seconds left and a play from under your own hoop. Will we see a play that leads to an open look or will it be a force up? And will it be Shalhevet taking home the crown? Oftentimes, these last second plays, someone ends up lofting up a deep shot. You want to get a pass to near midcourt and then another pass to near the three-point line in order to make a shot. That's what you're going to be, they're going to be looking for. They're going to be trying to get a pass close to the midcourt line and again Valley Tower they're able to run baseline we'll see if they use that to their advantage inbounding it is Hammy from under his own hoop guarding the inbounds a controversial decision but they do it and it's Zagi taking time timeout coach Schwartzberg I don't know if that was five seconds, but it was close, and that is why they called the timeout. And I think Coach Schwartzberg wanted to just see what defense shall have it was going to set up in. That way he's able to now draw up a different play. And, you know, it'll be interesting back and forth to see if shall have it comes out with a separate defense now to sort of trick Balotora. I would not be surprised because they were setting up with two men at half court, two men at the opposite three-point line, and one man guarding the ball. Right now, I think they're going to move a little closer to Valley Tola's men. You don't want to let anyone get behind you. As you saw right there, it looked like the Wolfpack were trying to send Ryan Terrell deep for a loft pass. And we've seen a lot of college sports, college basketball, NBA basketball, a lot of full court heaves, buzzer beaters. I think, that, again, they're going to be looking to find someone around half court and then turn one more pass and get a shot up. I mentioned it as they're about to inbound, and guarding the inbounds pass is controversial in the NCAA tournament in the game. There was no one guarding the inbounds pass, and it led to a full court pass that led to an open three. But they will stick with a man on the inbounder, and it's Benny Zaghi. Hami still inbounding, he gets it in, over shoots it, it goes right into the hands of Reamer, and no one better to do it. Shall have it on top of the Yeshiva world as they have won. The 2018 Sarah Czech champions, and it was no one better than Reamer the freshman with two free throws, and then secured the ball at the end. And Valley Tora wins it. I shall have it. Wins it 53-51. Third time is the charm. Coaches Coleman and Schultz very excited, ecstatic. 
jumping up and down as we have an upcoming trophy ceremony. We are going to have maybe a coach or two into our booth in a few seconds as a crazy finish. And just as I said, they drew up a play, tried to get the ball to their big man, Kamornik, at the midcourt line. But unfortunately, the pass was overthrown. They couldn't get it to him. And it was just a turnover. And a crazy ending here at the championship here at the 27th annual Sarachek tournament. And Jack, wild finish. Shalhevet came from way behind at halftime. Resiliency, we said it earlier in the game, that was gonna be one of the keys. And even though they got off to a slow start, they were able to make a comeback. And in overtime, they were able to put on the pressure. Valley Toro, the key aspect for this game, the foul outs. They had three guys in foul trouble. They really were in the double bonus, both halves. And that came into play in the second half. For Shall have it. They, it's exactly how they drew it up. I don't know if they wanted to be such a slow start on offense, but in terms of the defense, they made the other guys beat him the whole time, and then when it came down to it at the most, some of the Valley Toro players could not get it done. Ryan Terrell played his heart out, as all players did, but it wasn't enough, and shall have it. I would say the underdog, even though they were the one seed, most people around the tournament thought that Valley Tora would win it, but shall have it and Coach Coleman, once again, second time this season, just doing enough, coming back from a double digit deficit and winning their tier one crown, as you mentioned, third year in a row. They were in it and they finally took one home. And now we have Coach Coleman coming into the booth. As you see, as you guys are gonna be able to see in a second, Coach sweating, he's tired. Crazy game, double overtime, 53-51 win, Jack. Coach, I spoke to you before the game. We, we went through a lot of different things. How much of this game played out as you expected and how much was a little bit of a surprise? Um, you know, we came out really soft at the beginning, but those group of 14 boys got more heart than any kids I've ever coached in my life. I told them we wake up at five in the morning to practice all the time. We overcome adversity when accidentally our carpet gets left down on the floor and we take piece by piece. That's, that's my boss right there, buddy. Uh, you know, we've been down and been down against them before. So, you know, we've been there. We talked about it in the locker room at halftime. We jokingly say we got them right where we want them. Obviously, I got more gray hair than I, when I started this game, let alone three years ago, but nothing but love for these guys and my assistant coach here, too. Look how good looking this guy is right here, huh? Coach. Hi, Mom. The offense was the real difference in between the halves. What was what you say in the halftime locker room? What were the adjustments? Uh, we made a couple adjustments as far as where we were attacking from. They're very long. Uh, and what we were doing and what our game plan was originally didn't work. I was honestly a little bit stubborn in the first half okay, and not changing to... sooner. But we made the proper adjustments and came out in the second half and did what we had to do. After losing two years in a row, how much does it mean to climb the, you know, finally third year in a row in this game and to finally get the trophy? It, it's so much sweeter. It's so much sweeter. I, I can't even put it into words right now. You know what? You guys put on a great tournament. We're honored to be the champions this year. Thank you, Coach. I will show you the trophy presentation as it goes on now. Signing off from the booth, Jack Gancha, Simi Warsaw, Coach Ryan Coleman. The Shalheve Firehawks, the number one seed, win the championship in overtime, 53-51, beating Valley Tora. We will send you to the center court for the trophy ceremony coming up right now. Well, we call